Okay, welcome to our screencast on symbolism. Make sure you have your note sheets out. Be ready to both take notes and at various points you're going to pause this presentation to write down some thoughts for class tomorrow. All right, so here we go. Symbolism, it's meanings beyond the obvious. So what is a symbol? We see symbols all the time. All right? It's something that is one thing on the surface, but stands for something much larger than itself, a deeper meaning. Like here is a cross. The cross is one thing on the surface, but it clearly has a lot of deep meaning, especially to members of the Christian faith. Now, over here we have a st sort of strangely colored elephant has a deeper symbolic meaning now in American politics, just as the donkey over here does as well. It's a donkey, but it is also the symbol of the Democratic Party. All right? So a symbol has one thing on the surface, but then on a deeper level, it means more than that. Now, with that in mind, here are a whole bunch of things that can hold symbolic meaning, right? And they're things that we see all the time. And there's no necessarily right or wrong way to interpret a symbol when you just look at a picture. And uh, here, I'll give you a couple examples. All right. The snake here. This is a classic symbol. It comes out of Genesis from the Old Testament, where the serpent uh, was the force of evil. So snakes, a lot of times in literature, will represent evil, all right? Or will refer to someone as a snake in the grass if they're kind of sneaky, all right? Uh, similarly, the dove tends to represent peace. And again, that's from Genesis, because the dove goes out and finds a branch and brings it back to the ark and shows that they have found land and the flood is now going to recede, all right? So that's how symbolism works. It can have multiple meanings. You have an oak tree here. The tree might be a symbol of strength because they're really tough to knock down if you ever try to run into one. It can be a symbol of um, longevity because of the way a tree can age. All right, there's all sorts of different levels of symbolism that can occur. So here's what I want you to do. Pause this video and write down a list of six objects on here, six of the things you see on here, and next to them, put what they could represent, all right, more than just what they are, okay, like over here, this does not represent a cake which is on fire, it is a cake which is on fire, but it holds a deeper meaning for us, right? Right, go ahead and do that, and once you've finished, then just click ahead, start this up again, and continue the presentation. So, here we go with the actual notes. In literature, a symbol, just like what we saw on the last page, means more than it seems on the surface. Okay, so on the surface you have an object, a person, an action, something literal that's going on, some element in the story, but it's more than that. It links to a deeper meaning beneath the surface. And here's the key point. A symbol is a message from the author to the reader. Most of the time, characters are not aware of symbols. They don't think about the symbols because the symbols don't really involve them. They're in the story. The symbol is hiding underneath what the character is going through. And it's a way for the author to tell the reader about some deeper messages in the story. All right, that is absolutely critical, so keep that in mind. So what does that mean if it's beyond the surface? Well, let's look at three different levels of meaning and stuff, okay? First off, you can have an image, just something you see, something that you can picture in the story. So guy goes shopping for some fruit, bought an apple. Okay, big deal, he bought an apple, right? It's piece of fruit. But that same apple might be a metaphor. If someone says, oh, he is the apple of her eye, 
It's not that this guy has literally turned into a piece of fruit which has been rammed into her face. Right? That doesn't make any sense. It's kind of strange. What it means is that she likes him, that she's focused on him. Okay? That's a metaphor. Now, a symbol has both these levels. It has some sort of literal meaning, like the apple the guy went shopping for, and a deeper meaning, like the apple of her eye. So, for example, in Genesis, you have the forbidden fruit of, from the tree of knowledge, the apple. And then that apple shows up all over the place in literature, like in this image here from the book Twilight, from the Twilight series. Why would they include an image of an apple? The stories are not about fruit, but yet on a deeper level there is something there. Right? That's symbolic. So why use symbolism? Authors use symbolism to give meaning beyond the obvious, to really emphasize key ideas or themes they're trying to get across. Now, as I go through these examples, you don't have to write down the examples. I'm putting them here so you can see the variety of meaning. All right? So maybe you have a river in a story. In fact, those of you who read The Giver in the springtime, you'll see there's a river in there that keeps coming up. It's clearly symbolic. So a river might mean the flow of life, just as a, a river keeps rolling its way along, life keeps moving. Or if it's deep and you can't see beneath the surface, it might represent the unknown. Thoreau, the poet, when he goes out on a Walden Pond and keeps trying to probe down into that ice, it's the depth of the water that's supposed to represent sort of the depth of his own soul, that he goes out there to find himself. All right? Water could mean purity, or the darkness might be hiding dangers under the surface. Now, water can have many different meanings depending on the context of the story, and that's a key point that I'll come back to. Symbols might draw attention to the plot. Right? If suddenly the characters are going down into a tunnel and it's getting darker, it could show movement from good to evil, that something bad is coming. Um, a, Edgar Allan Poe is great at that. Right? In the cask of Amontillado, the character is being led slowly deeper and deeper into this dark, dark catacomb as he gets closer to his own death. And he's being led into the darkest part of the man he thinks is his friend's sort of plot. All right? So that dark tunnel represents his own death and the darkness of his friend's soul. A storm at a critical moment in a story or movie can represent intense emotion, trouble coming, and then you get that sort of classic cheesy ending when everything works out and all of a sudden there's sun rising over the horizon and that dawn of a new day, right? It tells you that symbolically everything is better now. There is light at the end of that dark tunnel. Ah, symbolism, see? It can also give insights into characters. In Poe's Telltale Heart, great story. If you haven't read Edgar Allan Poe, you've got to read some of it. Um, in the Telltale Heart, after the guy buries his victim's heart under the floorboards, he's a little antisocial, he keeps hearing the beating of the heart louder and louder. And it's his own guilt that he can't get away from. Right? A character's name might tell you something about them. Like in the story The Lottery, a guy named Mr. Graves is in charge of the killing of people in his community, deciding who's going to die. You know, pretty obvious. His name's Grave, and he's going to stick people into them. Or a character's appearance can even be symbolic. Returning to the cask of Amontillado, the poor guy who gets killed is wearing a fool's costume. It's during Mardi Gras. He's dressed as a clown. And, of course, he is a total fool in trusting the narrator and being brought to his own death. Even his name, Fortunato, is kind of symbolic because um, the last thing this guy is is fortunate. Um, so the key here in all of these examples is it's not just that this, this element, a beating heart or a name like Graves or uh, the guy dressed as a fool, what gives these things the real symbolism is the greater story as a whole. The key to understanding the symbol is understanding that story, the context. So, how do you spot a symbol? 
there's no one way, but there are a few things you can look for, okay? If something is used repeatedly, colors or objects that are mentioned frequently, it's probably important. You'll see that under the persimmon tree. The persimmon tree itself is mentioned again and again. The fruit and different types of fruit come up again and again at key points in the story. The stars are mentioned again and again. All right, Character names in that story are symbolic. Look at what Nashma means. Uh, Nusrat, their names are very symbolic. Right? The leopard that shows up early in the story is symbolic. So all of these things, through repetition, demonstrate there's something more going on here. All right? You can also look for objects and creatures that have cultural meanings. Lions, like we associate them with strength. Owls are associated with wisdom. Animals that occur at key moments in a story might be symbolic. Um, in short, what you're looking for is things that are given unusual emphasis, that are repeated in the story, or given really important positions, like showing up at the beginning and at the end of a story. Stuff like that is a pretty good clue that the author is trying to tell you something. Because remember, a symbol is a message from the author to the reader. Now, here's one warning about this. Many symbols are personal interpretations. We can overinterpret stuff. All right, like here's an example. I love this little cartoon here from uh, Peanuts. Lucy is sitting here at her little psychiatrist's desk, and uh, she's been interpreting Charlie Brown's drawings. And she says, Do you always have the people's hands behind their back to symbolize your shyness? And he says, No, I just don't know how to draw hands. So don't go crazy with this stuff. It's open to interpretation, and I will guide you. I will give you hints as to what to look for, especially in these first books, so that you can then focus on interpreting and not so much on finding. All right? So this ends the official note-taking portion. Next are going to be a few images for you to take a look at. What I want you to do is pause on them, and jot down what you think they mean so that tomorrow in class we can have a discussion about these symbols and what some of them might represent. All right, per usual, come to me with any questions. Answer the online questions at the end of this. And uh, come in tomorrow with all your notes. All right, relax, take a look at these, and try to avoid overthinking it. Here's your first set. All right. Here and here are two very classic ones. Same thing here. All right. So on the surface, girl eating sparkly apple. All right. Metal with snake. Uh, donkey and elephant not happy with each other. But there's more to it than that. Now here is the really clever one. This is from 2006. It's in New Orleans. Focus on this word, and then start looking at all the details. You should be able to find about eight different things in this that are all symbolic, if you know American disaster history. On this page, all three of these images are sending a message. So what is the symbol here? What's the message that the creator of these drawings is trying to convey? And lastly, companies even use symbolism. In each of these four uh, logos on here, there is something symbolic. Can you spot what they are? All right. That'll do it for this presentation. Thank you for watching and taking notes. And uh, per usual, if you have any questions or any concerns, come see me. This is a bit of a complex topic. Don't worry about it if you're not great at it. It'll take some time, and that's really all right.